According to Hockheimer, Einstein had devised theories to make ships invisible to radar and torpedoes, but none of them had been tested in a practical environment. Hockheimer turned over as proof a copy of a letter Einstein wrote dated June 18, 1943, and addressed to Lieutenant Stephen Brunauer, Bureau of Ordnance, Department of Navy. The letter states, quote, I have an idea for an electromagnetic device for this purpose, which I would like to submit to you for your judgment. The U.S. government actually employed Dr. Albert Einstein to look at ways in which they could invent some kind of torpedo deflection by creating an electromagnetic field around the hull of a ship to somehow deflect incoming torpedoes. At the time, the British Navy had achieved some success creating electromagnetic fields on their warships to neutralize the magnetic mines the Germans were deploying. A steel-hulled ship is like a large floating magnet. As the ship moves through the water, it acts as a trigger device for magnetic-sensitive explosives. By running electric cables through the hull and pumping current through it, the electrical charge would cancel out the magnetism. Reportedly, the U.S. Navy ordered an experiment to see if the same technique would repel torpedoes. The ship used in the Philadelphia experiment was the USS Eldridge DE-173. The USS Eldridge was launched on July 25, 1943. Its main job during World War II was ferrying men and supplies to the contested area of North Africa. A destroyer escort class ship, the Eldridge was as long as a football field and normally carried a crew of 220, but not on the day of the experiment. It's believed that there's only a, a small crew, just enough to man the experiment. October 28th, 1943, the USS Eldridge is allegedly anchored in the Philadelphia Naval Yards. Wrapped around its deck are enormous electrical coils known as field coils. A field coil is just a coil, a massive wire, that when you run electricity through it, produces a field. Even with months of planning, there were many unknowns that fateful day. 5.15 p.m., a signal is given. The generators are fired up, and what happens next, according to Hockheimer, is chilling. When they initiated the experiment, a green fog enveloped the Eldridge. And as that green fog dissipated, not only was the fog gone, but so was the Eldridge itself. But the story doesn't end there, at least not according to Hockheimer. They gave the order to turn the experiment off. The ship rematerialized in the same green, greenish fog that it disappeared in. Hockheimer believes that the ship reappeared some distance away, possibly hundreds of miles. The Navy was horrified at the after effects of the experiment. Some people were missing, some people were, were absolutely deranged. In a few cases, sailors were embedded in the metal of the ship. One sailor had his hand embedded into the metal of the bulkhead, at which point they discontinued further experiments. Nothing can be found in naval records to support the experiment. But Hockheimer points to another letter composed by Einstein about a month before the experiment. In it, Einstein writes, quote, I do not have the feeling that much can be achieved in this matter through mathematical calculation. Experiment seems to me the only reliable way of confirmation in this case. Was Einstein referring to the Philadelphia experiment? Or was he suggesting another experiment altogether? What is known is that Einstein was simultaneously working on another top-secret project, building the atomic bomb. Making the destroyer escort optically invisible uh, is no more near fantastic as splitting the atom and creating the atomic bomb. These are all things that were just unheard of in the time. Making a destroyer invisible might seem extreme, but the reality is that it can be done. Raise the curtain. Do it. Scientists at Duke University have created an astounding material with impossible qualities. An invisibility cloak right out of Harry Potter. In 2007, 
reports surfaced that the British military had made a battle tank disappear. Until very recently, the most likely explanation of such an event would have been some kind of illusion. Illusionist Steve Wyrick practices invisibility as a headliner at Planet Hollywood, Las Vegas. We have issued Wyrick a seemingly impossible challenge to make something as large as a tank disappear. The principle? Manipulating perception. To be a great illusionist, you have to be a master of perception. One of the most important things in magic is to create the perception of invisibility. Wyrick will attempt to make this three-ton Hummer invisible. The vehicle will be driven onto a solid platform. A portable radar device will track the vehicle, and an audience of 40 people will witness the event from just a few feet away. I'm going to take everything I've learned in magic and take something that everyone can relate to, Hummer H2. I'm going to take that out of the traditional Vegas uh, concert theater. I'm going to actually make it invisible. There are no video tricks or Hollywood special effects being used. The Hummer is sitting on a solid steel platform on the top level of a parking garage five stories in the air. The attempt will play out in real time. Raise the curtain. The 40 people wait and watch. Everyone. Join hands. A radar operator has a clear reading of the Hummer on his radar screen. With a wave of the hand, the Hummer disappears from radar. All right. There's 40 people around the Hummer. Watch this. Do it. Now. <laughs> we did it. All right. One of the easiest things to use against an audience is actually the audience. Magic is an art form as powerful as any science. Tonight, I controlled all 40 of these people's perception and made them believe that Hummer was invisible. Now that's power. But it's real magic that we seek. Scientists at some of the leading universities are working on invisibility that derives its power from science as opposed to illusion. If you talk to a magician, if you talk to pickpocket, if you talk to stage directors, if you talk to anybody who wants to control where the audience look, they use similar techniques. But these techniques themselves are as old as mankind. I'm Christoph Koch. I'm professor of biology and engineering at the California Institute of Technology. The material that may make true invisibility possible to cloak weapons, to cloak you, is deceivingly simple looking. It's called a metamaterial, a secret composite material that could be used to literally bend light around an object and soon be as common and inexpensive as rolls of aluminum foil. I think science in general uh, is constantly redefining the, the impossible, and metamaterials seems to really have uh, fired the imaginations uh, and, and caused a lot of people to look at uh, scenarios and, and uh, applications whereas before they might have completely rejected them as not being feasible or possible. I'm David Smith, professor of electrical engineering at uh, Duke University. The entire subject of metamaterials has given us a lot to be excited about. Metamaterials could be the bridge to true invisibility, the break that allows other things to happen quickly. 30 years after the Wright brothers broke through the flight barrier, people were routinely flying from Los Angeles to New York. Nearly 30 years later, man was on the moon. <laughs>